Good evening, viewers, and welcome to Calypso Showcase. And tonight, here yeah, you saw Marshall Montano singing Too Young to Soak at the Dimash Gras Finals in 1986. Tonight, we want to look at the direction Marshall Montano's career is taking and the influence of the band Ecstatic on his career. Marshall, welcome to Calypso Showcase. And we also have on the set um, Monty, um, Winston Montano, his father. Uh, he is the manager of the band Ecstatic. Monty, welcome to Calypso Showcase. Thanks, Alvin. Well, first, let me start with you, Monty, because um, I wanted to ask you, in a nutshell, ecstatic, a novelty many years ago, today a full-fledged soca orchestra. What did it take to get there? Well, I think it was basically, um, it started off with having the faith in, in the children and what they wanted to do. and. Um, the parental influence there was that if you're going to do it, do it well. So therefore we applied all the things we read and all the things we had observed in entertainment. And this was just a natural progression. And today, how would you say the band fares in terms of, let's say, competing against some of the more traditional soca orchestras? Well, we don't like to say competing against. I, I don't like to use that term, but I think that we hold our own as um, comparable. And um, I think we give a very good account of ourselves. I think those guys have really worked hard and they've built themselves into a, a tight outfit, really tight. Marshall, a question I've always wanted to ask you after looking at our opening clip. What's the true story on the dapper? <laughs> We've heard a lot of stories that Guys sabotage you backstage, yeah. they stole the pin. What's the truth? The truth is, um, it was a technical mistake, as Daddy said. You know, it's like we didn't really discuss how we were going to execute it. We just had, had skin tights on and the diaper, and didn't realize that with so much movement, the diaper was going to keep sliding out, sliding out. And it was really humbugging me on stage. <laughs> so I, was, I kept pulling it up, but you know, I always say to myself, no matter what, keep a smile on your face. So I just mm. keep a smile and I just go in and pull in and pull in and pull in. And, you know, people thought it was the real thing and it looked like the real thing. Too. Yes, it did. Tell me a little bit about 1994 in terms of the total effort and what, what do you think, how would you assess 1994 for yourself? Um, it's like a dream come true, or well, not really a dream, but um, objectives, you know, that I set out to, you know, things I set out to conquer, I definitely did it, you know, because I remember it starting from back in the studio with Kenny Phillips and we sat down and from the time we listened to these songs, I say, Kenny, this year, if it don't happen, I think I'll just take a rest or pack up and do mm -hmm. some more books or something like that because it have to happen. And he said, don't worry, man, everything will work out. And going in with that frame of mind and coming with the new beats and the new attitude towards the music, 
I think that I really went out there and we had a hectic year. It was like no rest. I think I hardly, I wasn't even home for more than a month this year. Three years ago, we talked about career development. How would you classify yourself today uh, in terms of your career? Well, I think I um, took advantage of my strong points in the field of music in terms of, you know, going forward. I see it as um, a slow process. I always try my best not to build up my hopes and say, okay, well, this have to have to be, or have to do this, have to be a star or something. I just want to take it stride by stride, and um, I made sure to take some steps that when I get old, I'll still be able to push some buttons in a studio and, you know, still partake in music. But I think right now, I'm a bit under where I want to be. Mm -hmm. Just a bit under, so I'll keep working, working towards it. So what, what career would you say you have at this point in time? Are you just a straight entertainer? Full fledged entertainer, sound engineer, a music lover, music person. I just think all terms of music. I love. Monty, I understand that um, this is the 10th year since Marshall's, let's say, professional career began back in 1984, the first time he ever competed, and that some special celebration is being planned. Tell us more about that. Yeah, well, um, 1984 to 1994 marks the 10th anniversary of the ecstatic aggregation. Of course, you know, we had changed the name only in 1989, but um, we were first Pranasonic Express. Um, we wanted to mark this occasion, or we intend to mark this occasion with the theme, saying thanks and giving credit. Because it is one of the, um, that embodies some of our watchwords. We want to show our gratitude to all the people who have supported us in all the various categories. When I say that, I mean fans, I mean musicians, music people. I remember some of the early days, people like Chow Lenon and Colin Lucas. We want to remember companies, people like Nikki Ennis, they were always with us, you know, yes, Brenda, etc. And also we want to give credit to the boys for the effort that they have put in, in terms of developing themselves to be manageable, to, to share the dreams, a common dream that we have, that we could represent Trinidad and Tobago internationally. Where is this celebration going to take place? This will be at the Upper Level Club on Thursday. The 15th of is it December. Is the 15th of December? Is yes. it open to the public? Well, um, there is from 7.30, um, it would be for invited guests. These are people whom we have invited. And um, we'll start with cocktails. Then you would have um, the official ceremony. And after that, it's open to the public as a normal Caribbean night at the upper level. Not at normal. Not normal. <laughs> Not normal. A little bit <laughs> with Marshall there, it can be normal. <laughs> well, as usual, we prepared a little video clip for with Marshall and some of the members of Ecstatic, incidentally. So when we take this commercial break and come back, we'll take that in. Marshall, the last time we looked at your career, we concentrated a lot on the tunes which had brought you success. Looking back, though, over your career, there were some tunes that didn't get as much airplay or were not as popular in the public size, which I found to be, let us say, more meaningful. Let's talk a little bit about some of those tunes. Uh, to start with uh, the cry of today's you, tell me a little bit about that tune. Well, that was way, way, way back. Um, before that, that thing, that song wasn't even recorded in the first instance. It was like um, something to come out just as the youth crying out with all the problems that we had. And you know, usually I would work together with all these ideas come from my parents and myself sitting down, going through these songs and seeing what is needed, just as Too Young To Soka was needed from my first year and getting the problems with being in their tent and everything and they're saying you're too young. You know, that's how four youths came out, cry for youths. What future have young children today? What future in this world, I say? We working on to do what best.
was too early for your love you did in a form of a duet um, let's talk about that who composed it how did you come to record that that, that was a, a callaloo because i was a uh, pelham did the melody chibi did the lyrics and you know we came together and we put different ideas together in the studio and the music i think was what you know uh, was so catchy because it was really kind of minor and i'm just a rookie ranger kind of style mm. so you know it was a really nice song it got a lot of airplay in trinidad and Lot of, lots of people would say you're the boy who sang that song with that girl and we did a video, a nice video for it and it was just a sweet song. Like a flower fresh from the door Rushing sweetly at the door Girl, your words, they have a man I, looking back also, I, I, I saw tune In Time. I don't remember much about it at all. Can you tell me anything about In Time? In Time was a, it was a separate project that we, you know, we did. It started in school with um, the Royal Bank having this competition for the youth star class. It was at that time. And we, our school and my teachers wanted to do something in form of a song to talk about, um, you know, looking out for the leatherback turtles. And that was that song was generally based around the another back to this was written by my teacher and we worked on the music with myself, Jack, keyboardist from the band. And we went in the studio and put down a beautiful song. Who did the lyrics for that? Uh, Tyrone Calpi, he was my chemistry teacher at that time.
And um, funny enough, a, a tune which uh, I remember picking up uh, very much after Carnival and which I remember you doing at the stadium um, to, to good reaction was a tune, Indian Massive, yeah. which didn't seem to do well during the Carnival season. <laughs> Talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, lots of people misinterpreted as the usual. You know, every time we come on a song dealing with the race or, you know, a certain culture, we did take me back Africa. People thought it meant put me on a ship and take me to Africa. Uh, same way with Indian Massive, you know, some thought it was something racial, but it was not really. It was something just about the song and mixing Indian music with the dub music, curry rubber dub, chunky, you know, jarry the reggae and using nice things. It seemed to pick up later on because it had a really nice beat and Winsford Devines did that song on his best. Marcus, Marshall's brother. Marcus, what instrument do you play? I play the rhythm guitar. And how long you been associated with the band Ecstatic? Ecstatic, well I've been playing the guitar for like 12 years and Ecstatic 10 years. I heard that you fly planes. Uh, are you flying any lately? That is my love. I'll always be flying airplanes. Right now I'm doing a big course and it's taking a lot of my time. Yeah? So how far have you reached um, with it? Well, so far, I have my um, U.S. commercial, and right now, in order to work within the Caribbean with airlines like BWIA, I have to convert it to the British equivalent, which is Trinidad and Tobago, and that's what I'm doing right now. Tell me something. Of all the tunes that Ecstatic have played, what's your favorite? What's my favorite? Mama Ding Ding, I guess. Um, <laughs> the action this year. Yeah, the action this year. Seeing you going down with the guitar too was very uh, <laughs> revealing. This, this year, I lost a lot of weight, you know? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, doing the mama thing, thing. This is any any message for the public? Any message for the public? Yes, look out for ecstatic next year. You know, we preparing ourselves to to expand, to give you a real good show, a new ecstatic. You know, young, vibrant ecstatic. Thank you. Yeah. Are we move on to trumpeter in the band? What's your first name again? Nicholas. Nicholas. And uh, Nicholas, how long have you been associated with ecstatic? Well, i just been a year and some months, about two, three months. Hard work? Yeah, man, real hard and youthful and spiritual things going on in the band. Tell me a bit about traveling with the band and some of the places you've been in. Where's your favorite um, country? Well, I like, I like Canada. Canada is really comfortable and it's, it's nice. The people respond to the music well and feel comfortable, very, very comfortable. As a trumpeter, do you just play the music or do you get involved in dancing, moving, choreography? Yeah, well, I dance, me and the guys we do a little now and again. We have to concentrate so much because Marshall is he's a guy making mistakes he don't really want. And, you know, so we keep concentrate, concentrating on all the music and make sure give him what he really wants. And thing. Do you sight read or do you just play by ear? Uh, uh, I play by ear and I sight read, but I more want to do like jazz and thing to get the reading much cleaner so like if I had to go to studios and thing 
I like to really do jazz music because it helps you build the reading much faster. What's your favorite tune with ecstatic? Well, obviously it will be Mama Ding Ding, but I like Poverty. Poverty is yeah. <laughs> the, the cover version? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank you very much. All right. Well, we're going to Joey, one of the talented um, guys in the band. He plays quattro, he plays gu rhythm guitar, mainly. Lead guitar. Lead guitar. Lead guitar. All right, Joey, tell me a little bit about your musical background. Um, well, basically, um, it's rather diverse because I'm involved in church, Best Village, uh, um, the band. Once it's music, I'm there. You know, it doesn't matter the environment. Are you one of the foundation members of Ecstatic from the days of Pranasonic Express? That's correct, from the inception. I've been there all right through. Um, I, in addition to that, uh, when I joined the band, I was playing the quattro. I wasn't playing guitar yet. But, um, you know, from strength to strength, picked it up, started to like it, took lessons, and here I am. Very interesting. What's your, what moment stands out in your mind with the, the band Ecstatic? Um, it had to have been in Germany. Um, you know, I, I miss all, all the other trips, all the other places we've been to. Uh, in Germany, it was really, really different. You know, the professionalism with, with the whole scene, not just on stage, you know, off stage too, because to me, a lot of times, it's equally, if not more important. You know, it was extremely organized. Uh, we were taken care of in the best way I could ever remember. You know, so that for me, you know, it made me feel for once in my career that what I'm doing here is extremely important to other people. Your favorite song? Family Affair. In addition, um, because um, I think apart from all the nice party music and, and all that kind of thing, we have an obligation uh, to the community to send up a positive message. So for me, it's Family Affair. Thank you, Joey. Well, we're going to win uh, the other vocalist in the band, Wayne. How are you? I'm fine. Tell me, how does it feel to be, I put it bluntly, second string? <laughs> well, it's hard. Hard being on stage with Marshall, because Marshall is the main light. Yeah. But I think I'm coming on right strong with him yeah. and developing to a point that when, when I get on the stage with, with him next year, it will be me and Marshall in front. You know, looking back at the last two years, uh, you know, watching you develop, you started very, very nervous, very tight, and one can see you beginning to loosen up this year. And I'm looking for big things in 1995 from you. What is your favorite song? Well, my favorite song is Take Me Back Africa. I just love Take Me Back Africa because of the rhythm, and it's my, it's my kind of music. Well, I'm wondering why it is the band doesn't do that more often in gigs, and maybe you should let them let you sing it for a change. Oh gosh, that would be a good opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something about the trips abroad. Where do you like to go? Hmm. In all the trips, I will agree with Joey. Germany was the ultimate place. And having been to Germany, you learn to appreciate what you're doing more and more. So. I could, uh, I could tell other people around the world to take some examples and treat our Calypsonians and entertainers in China and Tobago, Tobago with more respect. You're singing um, your own, one of the tunes, you are doing the lead on it. What tune is that? That's fine, the dance hall. Looking for big things in 95. Ecstatic in general. With, with our songs, next year we will just be a big bang. It have no stopping us. It's no return from next year, 95. Thank you, Wayne. Okay. Well, on to Soka, and I, I know that's your nickname. You, they tell us your real name. My uh, real name is Colin Stricker. What's your duty in the band? Well, I'm the drummer, backup vocalist, percussionist at the same time. A very important role. Yes. And how long have you been with the band? Well, uh, apparently it was a year before we turned to ex ecstatic. Uh, that's about... How long, Sujay? Six. About six years, yeah. About six years. Yeah, right? about six years. How do you assess the band over these years? What has it done for you as an individual? Well, first to begin, uh, it, it, I got a lot of exposure to outside from the band. I got to learn more about life, meeting different people. You know? So it, it, it gives you um, uh, well, you, you get to learn about life itself then. Right? So you, you learned how to deal with people, well, as I say, public relations, department I like. <laughs> so the, um, the success hasn't gone to your head? No, not at all. I believe that 
once you let success go to your head, things get hard. If you take it as, well, the music, the band, playing music, as something you love, right? It's helped you out a lot. Have you ever felt like going up front and doing some lead vocal? Yes, I've done it before. Mm -hmm. yeah. What tune? I do, at one time I did a calypso that was um, by Swallow, Wang and something. And well, I started doing a few dub before. I think it, you did a shadow tune one year. I do think that was Roger, I believe. Roger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite song in the band? Uh, Take Me Back Africa. I love that song. I don't know. I feel it's the type of music. Well, ever since I'm small, I always love these best fitted music. I mean. So, the tidy real African music in it. I just love that. Any message to the public, your fans, the youth? Uh, well, to the youths coming up, things is very tough with like unemployment and things. But I believe that where there's a will, there's a way. So once you try hard, it will succeed. Now, thanks a lot and best of luck to the entire band, The Ecstatic for 1985. I've seen the faces of racialism, the agony of apartheid. I know the shame of colonialism, humility. Wounded pride. I've been a slave and a soldier, a fugitive on the run. Yeah, but in my quest for utopia, just like the prodigal son, hear me now. I want to be in arms again. Take me back, Africa. I want to share your sorrow and pain. Take me back, Africa. I want to be a man, not a nigger, with an equal right to the future. I want to be strong like Mandela. Take me back, Africa. My roots in Nigeria. Zimbabwe and Ghana. My soul in Namibia. Take me back. I said to take me back, Africa. Let's look again at your career over the last two years and especially your entrance into the Soka Monarch competition. I think one of the big surprises in 1993 was Marshall Montana running third in Soka Monarch yeah. with a relatively unknown tune. I like it. Yeah. Talk about that experience. That, that was a, a shock to me because this song, this song was a good song, lots of humor, good Soka, nice hook line, but it came out so late that you know, nobody really knew about the song. Everybody would say they thought it was somebody else singing the song. And I mean, on that night at Soka Mona, I think I just went out there to have a good time. And I was uh, up number three, I think it was very early. And then the people were just ready to bubble and I gave my best performance. And I think the performance was what really took that song. I was shocked, I didn't even expect it. <laughs> so come on, Act 1994. Um, to me, that was the only major disappointing part about 1994 for me. But as I say, competitions don't really phase me, you know. It's whether something happens, it just happens for a reason. And I, you have to accept it because there's nothing you could do about it. But um, I think, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was the way I performed, but up to this day, we have no explanation for why, you know, the placement was so low. I went to the night where I did my best. Priorities, this is time to party. It is priorities, this 
Well, we want to wrap up because we want to show uh, a little video of you. Um, by all means, the video that you did this year to wrap up the evening. I want to thank you for coming. Thanks a lot. Monty, especially. Best of luck for uh, the Thanks. entire band ecstatic and convey um, to your wife, Elizabeth, a hardworking wife. Uh, we appreciate the work that she's been doing behind the scenes. And to all the members of ecstatic, congratulations and have a wonderful 1995. Before I go quickly, let me know that, let you know there is a lot of things happening for the rest of the week. Tomorrow evening, John Wayne Productions having a launching at the mass camp. A host of Calypsonians will be performing. On Friday, you can take in the launch down at the Harvard, Kitchener's new tune, the heavy roller, you hear it's strong. And on Saturday, you have both the square off between Baron and Chagallos and the finals of the Soka Parang up in Arima. So a lot happening on Friday, on Sunday, the Bajan invasion. You couldn't ask for more. Let's go now with Marshall Montano, his video of By All Means. And see you next week. In fact, we take a rest for the next two weeks on Calypso Showcase. We'll have two Christmas specials for you. See you in the future. Mama, oi. Mama, oi. Mama, oi. What's this? By all means, this is time to party. Eh, eh, by all means, this is time to bed. Everybody wine and roll and lose control. It's back and all, oh Lord. Back and all, oh Lord. Wheel and tumble, get on bad in the pet. Everybody raise your hand in the air. Let's party. Wine, oh Lord. Raise your hand in the air. Let's party. Wine, say jump up and wine. Raise up 